Yes. Hello, everyone from the World Record Studio, CEO World Record. Uh, here I am, Laura, today representing Guy, who is the CEO and the co-founder of Pulsa Power, and as well representing Belgium. So, Guy, without further ado, um, I was thinking about the question I want to ask, and I thought, could you take me back in time? and share with us um, what were the events that led you to to where you are today, both as a human and as the CEO of Pulsa Power? Yes, um, I think it's a, it's, it's a long story in that sense. Um, I've always had an, had an ambition to, yeah, let's say, to improve the world and uh, to, to try to make things better. And for a long time, I worked as an employee in several companies before seeing what the boundaries were and how corporates were operating. And uh, that has led to some discussions in the past, constructive ones, nevertheless. But it made me think at some point that I, I said, OK, I think I can do better for myself and create a bigger impact into the market, because that's quite important for me to be able to create an impact to the world, to people uh, and, to, and to their lives. Um, and that has led me actually to set up my own company, which we then quite quickly afterwards merged with my co-founder to form uh, Pulse of Power, um, where today we are, let's say, in the midst of uh, providing uh, engineering services for, um, let's say, mainly the B2B sector in the decarbonization of energy supply and use. That's in a nutshell. Um, so we do not construct, we do not invest in order not to create any conflict. We're a bit in the middle of an ecosystem of companies that we work with always in the interest of, uh, of our clients and that has led us actually in a very fast way to uh, to gain a position into the market that people have really understood the added value of taking that specific position alongside next to them buying in that uh, the technical know-how that the whole energy transition brings along with them and in that way, it's, it makes, we already made projects possible, which the client had basically already buried and uh, uh, pronounced that. So we revived them. And in that way, um, I think we are really making an impact in bringing more renewable energy to the world uh, on one hand, and at the same time, decarbonize industrial processes. So. Wonderful. And uh, let's go to the world record question, which is just... Um... So epic. I love that question. <laughs> some of people say that uh, it took them some time to think about that. Uh, some say that it was quite easy. I guess it's different for everyone. So, Guy, how is the world then better off because Pulsa Power is in it? Um, I think we can clearly say that it is actually the main purpose of the company. The company was actually founded specifically with that purpose in mind. So leaving behind a better world than the one we found when we came into it is something that really lies into the heart and soul of what we do and, and how we uh, perceive this, uh, this business. Um, and of course, alongside, you need to make a profitable business to make that happen. So you need to find a business case that can serve that purpose. And um, as I explained before, by decarbonizing our energy supply and use, which is a lot wider than just implementing solar panels or wind turbines or something like that, um, we can create a much higher value chain for our clients than what they can typically find to the market. The main differentiating factor for that one, Laura, is that um, we apply a very holistic uh, approach uh, to this question of energy supply. And right from the start, if we design systems, we already have in our minds and in our design processes elements like biodiversity, water management, food production, ecology. And by integrating this right from the start and applying this in a holistic phase, you can find ways to do much better and create higher value for the overall project, which is beyond the typical pure financial return of it. And that helps, of course, also to create a societal acceptance of this whole energy transition, which is also important. Um, 
if you look at our tagline, for example, underneath Pulse of Power, it also says very clearly, safe, reliable, and affordable energy for all. So yes, indeed, in the end, it's all about the money and you need to make sure that energy is affordable for people and accessible. Um, but that element for all is very, very crucial for us. It's not just for the rich and famous, let's say, you need to get the whole society, everybody needs to come on board. And I think that is part of how we believe that we can create a better world with the mindset and the way how we operate in these businesses. Mm. You know, I listen and um, I, I wonder, do you, do you think that creating the business which is um, so rooted in its purpose and impact is more difficult uh, and more like requires more energy, intention, you know, time to design than simply like look at that in a linear way? Um, yes, it is um, because of several aspects. I mean, one of them is that since you put the client and the um, the world, let's say, first, and not immediately the financial um, targets, it means you really have to start thinking long term. This is not something that uh, gets you rich quickly. That's that's for sure. Um, but if you are uh, entrepreneuring from this kind of vision that you want just to, uh, to become rich, I think it's quite difficult to make this sustainable. So. If we have defined five core values in our company, and let me just go over them a little bit. I think this will explain sure. our answer to the last part of that question as well. The first one is about ethical business practice. So you need to be very ethical in what you do. A lot of our clients are competitors from each other. Of course, we cannot share information. We know a lot of the inside of our clients because the better we understand them, the more tailored we can make the solution for them. That's one thing. Second one is customer central focus. So you make sure that your customer is at the heart of your organization. It's not something of someone who just pays your bills. Um, you're really making a difference for your clients. Um, you make their business more profitable, even to the extent that we provide and implement new business models within our clients' businesses. And that's why we have the biggest impact because we really make them turning their minds around on how they have to look at energy. And that has been quite an eye opener, even for some energy companies already, uh, where we work for, that they were quite yeah, amazed to see how they need to look differently to their day to day business, what they're doing today and how it will look like in, let's say, five years from now. Point number three is employee care. So your employees are your assets. We are an engineering company. So um, the only asset, or let's say the main asset that we have is the gray mass that is inside of every of our uh, employees. So make sure that you create an environment that they can thrive, that they're not blocked by silos, for example, that they can um, break out of their walls and provide a growth path, which is not necessarily automatically leading to a management position. You have to be able to define growth paths um, by becoming, for example, uh, what, we, what we currently call an um, a subject matter specialist. So hmm. someone can be the specialist in the market for that specific element, having a lot of responsibilities, having a very senior position, but have no direct reports. And that is something, let's say, that we uh, that's, that I was struggling with in, in, in some of my previous companies, that if you wanted to grow, you needed to come to a leading position, you needed to lead people. That's not always the right path for a lot of people, basically undermining their motivation and also undermining their potential capacity. And this is something that is, from what we can see and the feedback that we get from employees is really very, uh, very valuable for them. Number four is sustainable entrepreneurship. Of course, we are in the business of renewable energy and so on, so it may sound like an, an evident element, but it drives certain decisions. Um, we were quite early with um, electrifying our, our fleet, for example, um, compensating CO2 impact when you take flights. Um, these are, let's say, the obvious ones, but also 
if you design systems, we are now, for example, making calculations about CO2 impact. How can we use the ETS2, which has been uh, decided in Europe uh, end of, uh, sorry, beginning of December of last year? Um, how can we make this an opportunity for companies instead of a threat? Because a lot of companies now see this as a threat. They're going to have to pay for CO2 and so on. Now, how can they use those credits in order to create new business models? So that's the kind of thing that you bring into the market, not only within your own organization, but you spread it into the market as well. And last but not least is uh, what we call under the flag of value creation, which you will probably see in a lot of companies. But how we define it is that we do understand that our planet is a co-shareholder of each business and that only positive impact to the planet itself will create long-term sustainable shareholder value for everybody. So there is always, let's say, one seat on the table, um, which is planet Earth. And that one has an important vote as well, even though it can't speak up for itself. So it's, it's, it's a certain mindset that you need to bring into, but um, once you get those core values um, into the minds and hearts of people, um, you can see that your organization is going into the right direction and that we're really uh, thriving for, for the better. But again, it is a struggle. We are growing quite fast. Um, we are not immune to this kind of growth pains that every company has on this one. So um, I think we're, we're doing quite fine. We will be focusing further and further across Europe. Um, we're quite successful already, even though we are, we are a young company. Um, to already have quite some impact into some of the European projects already, but um, I'm sure we have, you haven't seen the last of us yet. Mm. It's beautiful. Those five values, you know, they just simply shine through everything you do. Um, you know, we've been in contact this year, so it, um, I kind of feel that I do mm. recognize all of them in, um, in the way you walk the talk uh, guy. And I wonder, um, do you, do you often feel uh, like in a conflict within yourself when, as you say, you, you see already that that mindset is there in the company and this, you, are, you have created an alternative holistic kind of a more systemic way, which is not like command and control silo driven. And mm -hmm. then there is this you know, like all of these new requests coming, right? Like um, uh, from new clients, maybe already um, existing clients. Do, do you often feel the inner conflict between growth at any cost and, you know, like, like keeping what you've created? And if you do, like, what, what is that inner conflict? Um, yes, there is definitely a conflict. Um, and I think it's hard to avoid as well. Um, if you're growing as fast as we are, and just to, 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 to summarize on this one, we've been growing in, in two years time from two people to more than 20 people. Um, you are on a constant change of processes, um, uh, ways of operating things, ways of doing things. And um, also important is that as well myself as my, uh, my business partner, we both had to let go certain of our tasks, which we know um, initially they're not done as well as what you have done it if you would do it yourself. Um, and that's normal. You need to get over that one. Um, so you need to create an environment where people can make mistakes without jeopardizing the business, of course. And that's finding that balance is, is, is quite difficult. Um, secondly, um, the amount of requests that we get in, we try to scale up with the organization and with the people that we have and the skill sets, etc. But at the same time, um, you're never in balance. You will always be off, either ahead or uh, lagging behind. So that means that you can't bring the service that you would like to bring to your clients. And you need to keep your clients happy, of course. You don't want clients to run away and to go to somebody else, etc. Um, so it's, it's a difficult and delicate balance that you need to maintain of saying no to certain clients uh, who maybe are yeah, not fitting into the right strategy that we are following, the right core business that we can offer, and serving your, uh, your, your key account clients, let's say, uh, to make sure that you can maintain those ones. Because in the end, 
they do pay your bill. They make sure that at the end of the month, every time you can pay the, the wages of, of your employees, of course. So it's not growing at all cost um, because I think that is a dead end uh, in, in, uh, in the longer run. But you need to make sure indeed that you find a good balance as much as possible, uh, no matter how difficult it is um, to, uh, to serve your clients on one hand, but keep the, the company growing and, and alive as well. Uh, and to make sure that uh, there is not, you're not creating any financial struggles, for example, to your employees or to your uh, suppliers or anything like that. So all of that has to be kept in balance. Um, and yeah, it is a struggle. It is an inner conflict, as you say. Um, yes. Yeah, and um, let's talk about uh, fears, because um, what I've noticed, uh, not only in my life, um, but in, um, in in the life of, um, of, of, let's say, other leaders and just like other people that, you know, fear um, can be such a big driving force uh, for each of us to... Um, you know, to, to create something more positive, uh, cause we, we, you know, we got, I don't know, burned from that, or it's something frustrating us. Are you aware of certain fears, um, guy, the ones are driving you forward? Um, I think there's two kinds of fears, uh, that you need to define on this one. Um, one that is definitely driving us forward is, the fear that we sense with our clients, for example. Um, we just come out of an energy crisis in 2022, where a lot of companies even had to shut down their production, had to, pe had to, put, had to lay off people um, or put people on technical unemployment and these kind of things. So yes, there is a certain fear that this would happen again. And um, how can we help them take away that fear and make sure that they are more robust more agile for uh, for the future. I think that's that's one thing indeed, and that drives us to a certain extent. Um, and I think we are quite good in providing necessary answers that want to take that fear away. On the other hand, of course, if you look at internal fears that you have and, and to the market, um, I think there the biggest fear is to not succeed in what we are trying to achieve. And that we have to leave at some point with an unfinished business, to call it like that. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't an easy decision, of course, starting um, on your own as, as an entrepreneur, whilst having a stable income, stable job. Um, there was absolutely not really a risk of being laid off or something like that. So it was a deliberate choice to make that jump. Um, that was a bit fearsome. Of course, you're trying to find it out in the market, what the requirement would be, you do your homework, etc., to take that away as much as possible, but still, you never get that away uh, completely. Um, but the advice I can give there to people is that if it's in you, sooner or later, it will come out and you just have to jump. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's an adventure um, and just allow yourself to, to fail. That's, I think that's important as well. Um, fear shouldn't stop you. Um, that's just take it down as a challenge and see how you can minimize that risk associated with the fear that you have. But if you don't have fear, I think you're also missing out on the fun. Yeah, I believe so too, that, um, then we are kind of playing too small if we hide behind that fear, but yeah, you describe those, the two ones so, um, elegantly, the, the one outside, like from outside in and the one internally and, and yeah, I do feel that the one internally I can really resonate with myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, um, let's speak about, uh, certain maybe rituals, the ones you have in your personal life, um, as a leader, as a human and with the team that guy helps you to stay anchored, um, to the big purpose and impact of Pulsa power to f like, to be aligned within your decision making and etc. Could you share with us what are these rituals that keeps you grounded and and keeps you like feel feeling in oneness with the yeah with the decisions you aim to create? Yeah. 
Um, I think the first and foremost important on, on these rituals is self-reflection. I think that's the most important ones. You need to know for yourself very clearly and maybe even written on paper, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Um, this is not an easy exercise for a lot of people. And I'm doing this already for quite, quite a number of years. And you need to know, okay, wherever you have a weakness and everybody has those, um, you need to find people around you that can fill in that weakness so it becomes a strength. I think that's, that's one ritual that I'm constantly on the lookout for. And I am expanding this also within the organization, constantly scanning the organization. Where do we have weak points? Um, which strengths does a certain person maybe have, which we are not utilizing yet. Um, that's also, for example, in the hiring process uh, that we do this. I made a bold statement a while ago to say that we never fill any vacancy. And what I mean with that is that you write out a certain vacancy, you get a certain candidate, it will never be a 100% match. So you need to fill in the gap of what you had in mind compared to the best candidate that you can find. But at the same time, you also get something for free. That candidate has something always which you haven't asked for. And then you can ask yourself the question is, how can I utilize this into my organization to leverage to another situation and to another level um, to, to drive the company forward. So that is, let's say, something that, uh, that I have a bit as a ritual. Secondly, you need to bring structure into your day. Um, I know for myself, for example, which time of the day I'm best at, let's say, strategic decisions and which time I can be better do more repetitive tasks. Um, everybody has another biological clock in that sense, and you need to listen to yourself. That's, again, the self-reflection bit that you need to know um, how do you operate and which kind of activities do you better plan in which part of the day, for example. Um, and then maybe a third one is um, networking and knowledge. In the end, it's, it's a people's business. So you need to create sufficient time to keep a good contact with your clients, um, with potential clients on network events and these kind of things, business units, um, um, telling the story, for example, um, of how you see the, the vision of where the market is going to, how you think you can help companies in, in, in excelling better, uh, creating a better world in this one as well. Um, and that creates new opportunities, but at the same time, it also brings out your antennas and you can learn always from other people. Um, just getting in contact with people from all across the world, and I think you will concur with me on this one, Laura, just opens up a certain perspective um, and reflects you of yeah, how easy it, things you, have, you, you may have it here. Or all, otherwise, you can also see opportunities, how things are being done better somewhere else in the world, which you can then apply into your own business. Um, I do that even to a certain extent in my private life using certain ways of living from Asian people, for example, applying them to myself. Everybody has the strengths and weaknesses, same thing here. So um, I think that's another ritual that I'm really interested in and always like to meet up with, with new people, make sure that I can learn from them who you are, what's your background, um, how, how can we jointly improve ourselves? Mm -hmm. Wow, this is just beautiful um that you are so curious and uh you know in everything you do and um and the ritual even that i really take i never thought about the question the one you brought that you know when you are hiring someone then uh these type of people they come as well with certain talents the ones you might not even looked in you with your linear eyes um and yes. and, and being aware of that I think that is something profound, right? Because it then like, yeah, it lets you see the human, uh, you know, rather than the, the function or speciality. So yes. wonderful insight. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I wonder what are, what are the things you are like mostly proud of, um, Guy, in, in your life? Um... Maybe an obvious answer on this one, of course, is, uh, is in the first place, my, my, my children, of course. Um, that's something I cannot 
forget in, in, in this one. Um, but let's say if you look at it from, from a business perspective, then the fact that we have already changed uh, certain businesses into another direction based on the works that we have done together with them. So we are being recognized, even though, again, the company was only erected just about two, a bit over two years ago. Um, within that short time frame, we've already been recognized as a reference into the market. And uh, we're being invited on stage regularly to, to tell our story and to uh, even very large corporates already are now uh, asking to, to work together with us because of the unique vision and the unique approach that we have on this one. So I think that is something that makes me proud that um, we are in that sense overachieving and what we initially had uh, estimated for. Um, it's a challenge at the same time because it makes you have to grow faster than that. Um, that gives other uh, elements on that one. But it is something that, that, that does make me proud as well that um, we are creating this impact and Again, especially changing business processes within existing companies. Companies that are already out there for decades used to do a certain thing and doing that really very, very well. But now we're being faced with a new challenge and not really knowing exactly how to deal with that one. And that they really take the advice that we give them for granted and ask our helps to strategically make decisions in the further development of that company. And I think in that way, we can really like a bit of a ripple effect. If you throw a stone in the water, this is the effect that we start to see into the market. And I'm really looking forward to, to the future of, uh, of what we can, can do further. So, uh, yeah, I can just imagine how, uh, how well it should feel inside, uh, you know, knowing and getting this type of confirmation, uh, that, you know, the choices, those like really deep intentional choices you made um, with the team, with your partner, they are, yeah, they are now visible. And uh, to be honest, I even received a couple of messages on LinkedIn from a couple of people saying that uh, that guy is a catch, that they are looking forward for the interview with you because the really? things, everything you do. Yeah, I did. So <laughs> it's ethical and they like maybe one of the client even. So I'll, I'll, I'll text you later. But uh, yeah. so, yeah, thank you so much, Guy, for for being who you are, first of all, for um, mm -hmm. listening to yourself and truly, you know, not lying to yourself and uh, being brave enough to, um, like, honestly design the, the, the intention and the business the way the way you want, the way you guys decided for for the planet, for the wealth, for, you know, yeah, for the people, for yourself, of course. So I think you are just such a remarkable example for everyone, um, not only me, but everyone who is going to listen to this interview. So thank you so much for, yeah, for leading this endeavor. Thank you. No, no problem. Thanks a lot for your feedback, Laura. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to hear that. And, uh, Again, I'm, I'm always pleased to, uh, to try to help people out and maybe sometimes just giving them another perspective on how to do things or uh, maybe a new insight in their day-to-day -day businesses. So yeah, glad, glad I can help out. Mm, thank you.